Few little uh, snooker shots for you there. I hope you enjoyed them. But now getting back to uh, Sonny Edwards. I put a tweet, this is why I'm not going to tweet no more I think, I put a tweet out and I'm saying here yeah, I think Sonny Edwards, Tommy Frank, Harvey Horn, Mark Tibbs as fighter and Kadi Quasi Kadimi. Uh, I think that that's a good little quartet of fights, a good little round robin there and uh, I just think that super flyweight kids should get paid, I mean I'm not saying they're going to get heavyweight money but how can boxers go collect 7 million on a certain fight like Tyson Fury did and then Isaac Lowe go and get a, a crap purse like that but Sonny turned it into why is that what Tommy gets paid well no that ain't what Tommy gets paid and since when has Tommy Frank fought on an undercard with somebody getting seven million Sonny so you tried to be clever then you went and put a tweet out Sonny saying that Tommy told you how, how much he got for an English title fight. Yeah, you told me that before, Sonny, in a direct message. But when you're going to be mentioning things like that, Sonny, you can't mention that on Twitter, that Tommy Frank told you what he got because he sparred you. You want to put it out on social media. What's that, what does that say about you, Sonny? It's not very classy, is it? So I've had to block you. But I wish you all the best. I think you're a leery little fucker, but... You know, you've got a good little style and you'll do alright. But I just think that super flyweights, I'd like to see them get paid. Do you know what I mean? I'd like to see them get paid. And uh, I don't think it's fair that the big guys get all the money. Because they're still boxers, aren't we? It's like everybody's complaining about KSI and Logan Paul getting millions. And uh, it's wrong, isn't it? People in the first boxing fight are going to get all that money, but Conor McGregor did, didn't he? Sky jumped on that bandwagon, but I thought it were a bit classless that Sonny Edwards started putting it out that Tommy Frank you know, had told him that he only got X amount for English title. Well, that's between Tommy, isn't it? There's other things that was on behind the scenes that you would not know about Sonny, and I'm not going to go putting it on social media what our fighters get exactly so you shouldn't try and draw me into things like that we're actually trying to get some PR around you Sonny but if you're that thick you've ended up dropping down a division I mean it, the bigger weight you are the more money you get and you're heading south Sonny instead of north so but unbelievable but I can I can see I can see why you're not getting the fights, Sonny. You're rubbing people up the wrong way. Fancy putting something out like that on social media. Why is that what Tommy gets? And then I say no, then he said, well, he told me this. Well, how can it lead off into that? Go do a video if you've got a problem with it. Or go ring Tommy up but show a bit of class. So, you're blocked, Sonny. Sporting icon, you're blocked. You can now chat to each other. You can now chat to each other now. And... Uh, Slag Porky off. <laughs> hey, we've got a sporting icon there who don't work in boxing industry. He's got a YouTube channel. And you've got Sonny there who can't get a fight. So, you should put them both on Mastermind. Right, MTK Golden Contract, is it a good thing? Uh, yes and no. Josh Whale fought an eliminator for featherweight title. And uh, Lee Woods got the belt. Commonwealth title featherweight belt and it's tied up in that tournament so it's not been good for us has it but on a whole I think it's good for boxing yeah I think it's good for boxing but nobody dare be critical about MTK dare they nobody dare say a word well if I see something that I don't like moving forward I'll be saying what I think so but nobody else dare say oh we don't all want to be like certain people hanging out at the back of their arses just because they get invited to a few shows if they, if they do a show and it's not very good I can assure you I'll be giving it both barrels if I think it's wrong and I don't agree with what's going on with Commonwealth title but you know it is what it is isn't it uh, so we're just going to have to be patient if we're going to go for Commonwealth route for Josh Whale but it is what it is so what can you do what can you do 
but the the I think it's a good idea what they're doing to it's trying to get the best guy out of a bunch of guys that are sort of in wilderness if you know what I mean so what they're doing and I think that's good it gives everybody an incentive to work together all small all guys and they might get a couple of kids out of these shows that end up fighting on big shows so that can only be good for boxing can't it if you know what I mean so but yeah but it is what it is isn't it so but good luck to MTK and uh, good luck to Sonny Edwards and sporting icons you know what I mean how dare I say anything about sporting icons right which brings me to drug cheats well we've done that one we've done that one so let's have a look what we have we've done that one so two seconds uh, here we are So, right, trainers, who's hot and who's not? Well, trainers, who's hot, who's not? Well, Ben Davidson was hot after Wilder fight, wasn't he? And then the Tom Swartz fight, but I don't get how we were hot after the Wilder fight. Well, I don't know, as Fury were dropped twice, wasn't he? If you're dropped twice in a fight, I don't think your trainers should be celebrated, do you? You should be looking at yourself and saying, we got dropped twice. We're, and knocking out Tom Swartz. And all of a sudden people are saying that Ben, ben Davidson's best thing since Angelo Dundee. I don't buy it. Fast forward a few months. And uh, Tyson's in a life and death with Wally. Now, and big John Fury let rip, didn't he, after BT Sport. Uh, fight with Tyson and Wall and he said his bit didn't he Big John Fury says sack the train I think that's a bit harsh because he's obviously got Tyson in shape and I think that's the main thing with Tyson he's not going to be able to he's not going to be able to tell him how to fight because he knows how to fight but if he can be his pal I suppose and if he can be Tyson's pal and get him in shape That'll be good enough, won't it, really? That should be good enough, but... It is what it is, isn't it? So, I'd say that... Jury's out on him. He's only a young he's only a young lad, isn't he, Ben? He's a young kid, isn't he? What is he, 25-year-old? You know, he, he can't beat experience, can you? But he looks to me like he were calm in the corner when Tyson were cut and... He didn't panic and that, so that's good, isn't it? But he's not a cut man, is he? He didn't do the, he didn't sort the cut, but he kept calm, didn't he? And Tyson went through years after he got cut anyway. And um, but will that harm him moving forward? Probably will harm him. Yeah, it probably will harm him. What do all you double agents think out there? Watch, listening to this. Uh, Fifty percent of your double agents. You think it'll harm him? Don't forget to leave me a comment, you know, and if Tyson's uh, not happy with his trainer, he can always go to Adam Booth, go to Adam Booth, he's the best trainer out there, Adam Booth. <laughs> Nearly as funny as Umar IFL, Umar, but, uh, but like I said, I could train Tyson if he don't need a trainer, he's a natural, isn't he? He just needs Asgi in his corner carrying spit bucket. But it'd be interesting what happens now. But let's judge Ben when he's actually done something with somebody from debut. Or he's. Let's judge him after he's done something with Isaac Lowe. You know, Isaac Lowe. Let's see what he does with Isaac Lowe. Because uh, if you can do something with eyes at low, I think that's good, isn't it? Let's judge him then, because Tyson and Billy Joe, they're already ready-made world champions, weren't they, really? They're already, they're already dining at the top table, aren't they? So, do you know what I mean? They're already playing in Premier League and Champions League, aren't they? So, is Joseph Parker Spider-Man? I don't know, but he seems to get pay-per-views at ease off Eddie Hearn, doesn't he? 
So he seems to get them at ease. So I don't know, but uh, I don't know, but it is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is. So, but boxing is a sport like no other. It's a sport that. It's like snooker and, and pool, isn't it? It can frustrate you. It can frustrate you. One minute you're flavouring at month, one minute you're not. One minute you're living in a council house or a bed sit or sleeping on somebody's gym floor. The next minute you're a world champion, aren't you? That's just how it can be. That's just how it can go, you know. Nobody uh, can prepare you for anything like that, but it's a sport like any other. And. Uh, it's changed since I started with Dennis April 2015 it's changed so much it's become now about how you get yourself out there and at the top of the tree is Eddie Hearn he's the top of the tree like him or loathe him Eddie Hearn with his fake teeth and his hair transplant he is at the top of the tree uh, mainly thanks to social media and people who are running YouTube channels like IFL and all the other YouTube channels, the people on who don't want to show the faces who are bigging up everything Eddie Hearn does and getting him out there. Now these people have changed face of boxing between them. Eddie's changed the face of boxing. He has changed in the last decade he has changed boxing for the better. And so is Coogan. He's led the way forward. You know, they've changed boxing. They've changed it. And, uh, you know, it's not been easy. They've not had it all the wrong way. I mean, I remember uh, when Eddie was a bit down. I'm not going to go into detail, but he was a bit down when Carl Frampton left him. I can assure you of that. He was devastated. But it's boxing, isn't it? It's. Uh, you know, it's become now about how you get yourself out there. And like I said, Eddie's at top of the tree. Like him all over him, he appears to use and abuse fighters at will. Somebody's just said to me. Yes, he does. Uh, and it's awful because he probably do not want to be like that. But what good is a fighter to him if they're not winning? When you're winning, everybody loves you. Right? When Dave Allen were knocking out Bracamonte and Lucas Brown, right? Eddie loved him, didn't he? Fast forward to Dave Allen against David Price. He lost every round and quit on his stool, didn't he, right? What what now? He's dropped his money from a high height. What's David gonna do now? He's had to pick his set up and he's had to go again. Now it can't be nice for Dave Allen, can it? When you win, you're brilliant. When you lose, he's no good to Eddie if he's losing, is he? But David Price is going to be no good if Chisora knocks him out, is he? If Chisora knocks David Price out, where's he going to go? Where's he going to go? So, I don't know. But next to sail off into the sunset and a cushy sky pundit job is one of Eddie's favourites. His second favourite, he even admitted it himself. Anthony Crawler. Now Anthony Crawler's a millionaire, a nice guy from what I've heard, but he's an overachiever. Is that harsh, Porky? People will be saying, no, it's reality. You know, I'm just going to speak the truth. It is reality. Uh, Crawler million dollar million dollar crawler is a millionaire now that's what he's always wanted he's been a world champion and he's been a millionaire now as regards ranking he's seventh on box like Anthony Crawler with his new teeth Luke Campbell's number, num, 
Crawlers number three in England, number seven in the world. Luke Campbell is number five in the world and two in England. Lee Selby's at the top of the tree for light for the lightweight. So they call it light, don't they now? Change it from lightweight to light. Uh, Vasil Lomachenko is obviously the man in here. He's he's the man of the moment in a 14 and one. Uh, lost his second. He lost his second fight, didn't he, against Salido? Well, fair enough, but it was a split decision, and he came in two pound over, didn't he, Salido? So is is Lomachenko beatable? Yeah, if he keeps going up in weight, I think he's I think he's beatable. Uh, who's Anthony Crawler fighting next? Well, Anthony Crawler. He fights in 19, 19 days. By the time these videos go up, it'll probably be about a week away, <laughs> now in my luck. Uh, Collar's fighting TBA. He's not fought since April, so he's had seven months out. Uh, but looking through Collar's record, he's uh, let's have a look at the British champion, Commonwealth champion. Uh, English champion, British champion, Commonwealth champion as well. Is it Commonwealth? No, he drew. Derry Matthews iced him though, didn't he? Derry Matthews iced Crawler. Massive puncher, Derry Matthews. Massive puncher. Gary Sykes beat Crawler as well. Gary Sykes. Craziness, isn't it? Absolute craziness. But the only two people to stop Crawler are Derry Matthews and Lomachenko. But, uh, but yeah, Gary Sykes. Uh, Gary Sykes beat him as well. Kieran Farrell, he beat Kieran Farrell, didn't he? I think that was Kieran's last fight. Uh, I wonder what's going to happen to Crawler now. Well, because he never really got his pay per view, did he? That he maybe should have had. But he managed to get a world title fight, didn't he, Crawler? So we can't really knock that, can we? He fought for a belt against Darlis Perez. He rematched him and won't rematch. Let's have a look. Right. So Darlis Perez. Right, they fought for it. It was a vacant belt then, was it? Yeah, a vacant belt. Well, it says here, Derry Matthews was winner of that belt before. Well, that class is interim belt. And then it gets so upgraded, does it? See, there's a bit of a mystery, isn't there, about about Crawler, how, how that belt came about. If you go on to Box Rec and look, makes you wonder if it was a, if it's a, I don't know. It's a, well, let's say we'll call him a world champion. Well, Danny Matthews is a world champion, then, isn't he? He drew for belt, then won it, then defended it. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's strange. Strange that. I mean, you look at this here, right? Derry Matthews, 18th for April, beat Tony Louise for the same belt. If you click on the belt on, on Boxer, then you've got Collar beat. Then you've got Perez Crawler draw, Crawler Perez win, Barroso Kevin Mitchell win, Crawler Ismail Barroso win. Then Linares beats Crawler, Linares beats Crawler, Linares Luke Campbell, Linares Gester, and then, and then it looks like Robert Easter Jr. and Rancis Bartholomew. Strange that, strange. So Derry Matthews is down as a, on a, according to Boxrec as a world champion, but I thought he was just interim. 
So Denny Matthews, I'm buzzing off that because I like Denny Matthews. A massive puncher. I saw him fight Tommy Coyle. Yeah, it says interim on this, the interim world boxing world lightweight title, but on the crawler one it just says WBA regular. Oh well, but anyway, crawler, he's gonna fight Anthony Crawler. And uh He'll get his payday, won't he? I think that'll be the last fight for him, but this is how I look at it, right? We Anthony Crawler. The curious case of Anthony Crawler. Is Anthony Crawler, right? Is Anthony Crawler, if he wins this next fight, which is not going to be against anybody who's top draw because Crawler's not headlining, is he? He's not headlining. Crawler's bowing out, right, on the 2nd of November, he's not even headlining, and he's in Manchester, and he's not headlining, so I don't know what, what's going on here, but we've got Terry Harper against Vivian Obinoff, IBO, Wilf, female super feather. Steffi Baldy getting in on act with Terry Harper. <laughs> oh my god. So, and then we've got. Let's have a look who this kid is here. And it don't look a bad card, that actually, but it's a bit threadbare, isn't it? Joshua Boazzi, he's got no personality, but he's in a fight for once. Felix Cash is out there, they wheeled him out. Felix Cash, 11 and 0. Has he got any knockouts? 7 and 0. Christina Linardato, Katie Taylor. World Boxing Organization. Terry Harper, so they've got two female fights on. Quasi Ashfak, Gamel Yafai, Dalton Smith. Sheffield, Yorkshire, 3-0, 20, age 22. And we've got Crawler on, million dollar Crawler, 34, 7 and 3. Uh, they're fighting TBA. Crawler, Gamel, Yafai and Dalton Smith are only ones not to be matched. Surely you've got to have Crawler headlining in his own town, surely. But what's the headlining? This this can't be right up running order, surely. Terry Harper and Christina Lanardato. Oh my god man. What's going on here? Terry should beat her. Anyway, she's been beat five times. Oh I know what it is now. It's here who for uh Chantel Cameron. Yeah, she'll beat Terry will beat her. Terry Harper will beat her. Uh Oh, I wonder what's going to happen then. But next it's going to be Crawler sailing off into the sunset and then you'll see Anthony Crawler on Sky. Uh, the script's already wrote for Crawler, isn't it? No, so it is what it is, isn't it? But will, but will Crawler be treated like Dave Allen's been treated? Dave Allen, we're told, if he loses against Price, he can... Uh, be a Sky Pundit. Well, when he turned up for his work at the O2, what did they do? What did they do? Hey, for the uh, Luke Campbell fight, and um, what's he called, Lamachenko, what did they do? They put him in uh, on a streaming job. They put Dave Allen in the crowd, right, and pointed the camera at him as they're looking at the action, and we can't see the action, but he was commentating on it with two other kids. As a streaming pundit, but Dave Allen turned up and he thought he was going to be a pundit, you know, like David A. Frotch and everybody. He's turned up and he said, oh, where do I go? And they put him in crowd with a streaming thing and he put his best shirt on and everything. So I think Dave Allen got a raw deal from Sky. Yeah, he got beat by Price, but if David Price had got beat by Dave Allen, you wouldn't have had David Price, would you, in the crowd, would you? But Dave Allen kept badgering Eddie for pundit work, didn't he? So he's ended up in crowd, but 
Now he's hanging out at the back of Frank Warren. There'll be no Sky Pundit job for Dave, will there? So I think it's a bit crap how Sky have treated Dave Allen. I've put here, has Dave Allen been treated fairly by Sky? No, he hasn't. Do you know what I mean? And do you know another thing as well I've been a bit fed up about? Whenever anybody mentions Dave Allen's name in a pub, Oh, come on, Dave Allen's on. Everybody seems to start laughing and joking and like he's a figure of fun or something. I want to say it to Dave's face, but I think that's out of order. Oh, come on, Dave Allen's on. Let's all go have a good laugh. Oh, he's all right, Dave. He's all right. And everybody having a laugh and while well, he's taking all these blows and that. Well, let me tell you this. Dave's laughing all the way to the bank. All right? He's already got four houses. And after his next fight, he'll have five and all five will be paid for. So you keep on going, Dave. Keep keep uh, getting them houses piled up. But don't hang out at the back of Frank, Dave, because it's not cool. But it is what it isn't. Dave Allen's 17, 5 and 2. 17, 5 and 2. He's, uh, he's going to make a comeback so can you blame him coming back no he's gonna get paid isn't it dave allen's gonna get paid but let me tell you this right let me tell you this let me tell you this dave allen right he's obviously at the same level as tom little isn't he right he's not a journeyman but he's about at the same level as tom little Right, that's what Dave Allen, that's the level he's at. Now... Game over for Spencer Fear and it's it too hard, isn't it? Anyway, enough talking about Dave Allen. I hope that uh, he beats the brakes off, or beats the heels off of uh, Daniel Dubois and brings home the bacon to Cunningsbury in Doncaster. But I make Dubois a massive favourite, and in my opinion, and I don't want this to sound harsh, but in my opinion, Dave Allen, well, he didn't want to come on Porky's Corner, did he? When he was riding high we had the urn, so as far as I'm concerned, he's not my problem. And when I see him, if he's got a problem with me, I'll tell him. But, 
I have to give my opinion to the boxing fans. Dave Allen has no respect for himself and he's no respect for boxing. He is in boxing for money and money only, which is what it's about, isn't it? But don't tell me you're training hard for these fights. Don't tell me bullshit. Don't bullshit me. Don't bullshit me, David. You're fighting these people for money. Don't bullshit. People around you should be ashamed of themselves. All patting you on back. Go on, Dave. Go on, Dave. Go on, Dave. These people should be reining you in and saying, listen, turn it in or go start again and build back up. Going in with killers. So you get battered from David Price for 10 rounds. He didn't win a second of that rat. He didn't win a second of 30 minutes against David Price. Right, or, 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 or however many rounds it were. What round was it? 12 round fight and he quit after 10th, right? He's quit after 30 minutes of Big Chuck knocking him about. Now Big Chuck's just been in with Tom Little and Cash Alley. Dave Allen could go fight people like that, couldn't he? He beats Nick Webb, Nebu, Bracamante and Brown. He gets the prize fight. If you lose to David Price, it's usually game over. You come back down the level and fight Tom Little, then you go again. Except he's going to go for the suicide mission against Daniel Dubois. Can't believe how crazy he is. He's throwing it all away. He's got a chance to do something with his life, man, from Connysburg, Doncaster. He could get a belt, but what only belt he's going to get now is probably one he's already got, a snake belt. So, good luck to Dave Allen. We wish him well, but he needs saving from himself, doesn't he? He's just taking piss out at fans, so I can't back him up. I can't back that, just turning up to fight. Daniel Dubar and quitting after a few rounds and saying he's too much for me, but I had a go. Well, what does that mean? You've had a fucking headline fight and you've quit. Again, fuck that, man. No, I'm not fucking into that, so. Anyway, moving on. Moving on to people that want to do some in boxing. Uh Right, let's have a look what we've got here. What went to next agenda? A few of you. Well, oh, yeah, let me just finish on this here. Somebody's put here. Porky, if we ever see Dave Allen in a few years down the line, it'll be. Whatever happened, Porky, to Dave Allen, the funny man on Twitter? Well, I don't want to be saying that Dave Allen's cabbage, but it's all happening around us. Boxing is the most unforgiving sport in the world, and this is happening. This car crash is happening in front of our eyeballs, right? And Eddie Hearn's already bailed out on Dave Allen because he knows what's around the corner for him. There's no saving him, is there? He's on a suicide mission from God. He is on a suicide mission, Dave Allen. He's the type of guy, right, who if he's in a bad mood or if he's depressed, he'll probably go hang off at Viaduct Bridge just to prove he can do it. He's not frightened of anything. He's... Just it's like Lenny McLean in that film, isn't he, who hangs off at them flats, off at thing on his fingertips. Davey's not bothered, he's got a death wish. Fighting Daniel Dubar at the moment, 22 year old, icing people, turning him into icebergs. He's got a death wish. And David's got an head like concrete. He's got an head like concrete. Nobody's to blame except David Allen. Whatever happens to him in years to come, I don't want anybody to say, Dave, I wish I'd have said this to you. Look, everybody said all that. You can't get through to him. It's down to the individual. Eddie Hearn's seen the writing on the wall. And he's bailed out. Frank Warren, he's not bothered. He's, he's more ruthless than Eddie Hearn. If you want to get paid against Daniel DeBar, well, you'll get paid, but you'll, be on, you'll probably be on X amount per round, how many you can last. That's what it'll be. You're not just going to turn up, get X amount of money and go. You're going to be on per round, so you're going to have to earn your money. So, but he's crazy. He could start again. He could start afresh. But there's no talking to him, isn't there? And whoever's telling him to go fight, to go fight uh, Daniel Dubois, well, what's all that about? Are these all, are these all his friends telling him that? I don't know, but... When you've got yes men around you, you can't save them, so it is what it is. But, as I've said, 
Dave's very cunning and we're not seeing the last of him so my advice is to David Allen, David I know you're listening, take a year out, take a year out of boxing, take a year out, alright, go train hard, take a year out, get rid of the 16 year old lodges you've got in your house, get rid of them, alright, take a year out of boxing, that's what you do, take a year out, and go learn your trade, that's what you do, go and learn your trade, that's what you do, go learn your trade and then come back a better person, but Jesus, going and fighting Daniel Dubois, you're crazy, you're crazy, it's not a tough man competition as Peter Fury used to tell you, go and train a year and come back a year later, Stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet. Older and wiser. Except now, what are you doing? Oh, I'm sparring David Price. Sparring David Price? What's that proved? He's just flogged you for ten rounds and you're going to go spar him? Oh, I'm going to go see if I can uh, get one up on him and get a trilogy going. What? Who is advising you? If it had been with Dennis Hobson, this wouldn't have happened. This wouldn't have happened, he'd have been protected. But, obviously, what can you do? So, he's alright, David, he's likeable, but he knows best, doesn't he? And if you say anything to these people, they know best, don't they? Well, they, they want to talk about how many houses they've got and all that, and I've been on telly and all this. Look, health is wealth, alright? Get in. Got to go for free out of free for twenty quid. <laughs> Come on. me done. Come on. I'm going for a pint of orange. Right, uh, just finishing up here on, on the Dave Allen situation with Daniel Debar. I don't want to see that fight happen. Uh, I don't want to see it happen at all. Uh, I think Dave's a crazy man if he fights Daniel Debar. Crazy with a capital C. I think he should start again fighting Journeyman and build his set up. He's only 27. Fraser Clark's going to turn pro next year at 28, isn't he? So there's still plenty of time for David Allen. He's got experience, hasn't he? Come here, Rocky, what are you doing? Come here. But it is what it is, isn't it? So, so, what can you do? What do you reckon, Rocky? Is Dave Allen going to beat the bar? Eh? Eh? I don't know. 
But it'll be interesting to see what what David's new nickname is going to be on Twitter and what he's going to call himself. And uh, it'll be interesting to see. And it'll also be interesting to see who's around David when he's when he needs his mates the most because boxing is the most unforgiving sport in the world. But I'd like to see Dave Allen in with Cash Alley down the line, but when he fights Cash Alley, Cash Alley will be 25 and 1. And uh, he'll be a better rounded fighter, and David Allen will probably be about 18 and 10 or something. And uh, be looking for a five quick five grand or something. I don't know. Hopefully, he'll use his brains, he'll fight. Daniel Dubar, Joe Joyce, Nathan Gorman, and then he'll get out of it. Might even end up fighting Tom Little and go out on a win, but he'll get out of the game. So, anyway, no doubt David will land on his feet. He's, Dave's very cunning. And we, like I said, we've not seen the last of him. He's very cunning, very smart. Well, he must be smart because he's done well for himself hasn't he and he's not won an area belt yet I know many a boxer who've got belts at home and they're not dull so anyway moving forward I look forward to seeing David's next gimmick on social media I've been stitches uh, Carl Froch he says he wants to come back Klitschko coming back Nigel Ben, Vladimir Klitschko Oh my god, Jake Wood says that Conor Ben can win a world title. The Jake Wood, stick to being Max Brannan, you helmet. Alright, the same Conor Ben who's fighting a guy ranked number 63 on box rec next. And that will be his highest box rec win if Conor Ben wins that. I want to be positive, I want to say positive things about boxing, but it's hard. Eddie Earn says everything is brilliant for him at the moment in his life. And, uh, but he does live in a bubble called Eddie's World, doesn't he? See, that's the problem, you see. Uh, but I'm going to leave you all with a story about O'Hara Davis, the one where he was best thing since sliced bread till the Liverpool matchroom mob knifed him in the back and Hearn hung him out to dry. We all remember that, don't we? When it suited them. Yeah, Charlie Sims. We all know what Charlie Sims did to our hour there, which don't we, Charlie? Hey, you piece of shit. Boxing is very fickle. If Awara did tickets like Warrington or Buglione, not a dint would have been made in his comments regarding Hillsborough when Awara wasn't even born. But. But it is what it is, isn't it? Not a dint would have been put in his career. He didn't do tickets, O'Hara Davis. And then made out made made a PR. Uh, a big PR move. Eddie Earn did a, made a big PR thing out of it of getting rid of O'Hara Davis, but truth be known, it wasn't like that, was it? Uh, you know, so he could look good in Liverpool, because Liverpool's bad to sell tickets, isn't it? That's why they didn't put Tony Bellew, David Hay on in Liverpool because Nobody up there is interested after they've done the foot money in at the football. Bellew fought away from home twice against David A. Why? Why? Point I'm making is this. You go think about Dave Allen and Wara Davis. They were riding high with Eddie Earn. Now look. Dave's having to go cap in hand to Frank Warren and Wara Davis had to do the same thing. Keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. You'll get your porky fix straight away. Shout out to Innovation Alloys and JJ Crump and Son and Climate Cool Air Conditioning. And can I just say that regarding the Josh Warrington show, I had a call today. Right, 7.45 am telling me I needed to shut my mouth going on about Dillian White's B sample or a team of Yardies will come to Doncaster and fill me in now I don't like being threatened on the phone but it's not the first time I'll probably just have to change my number yet again now I had a call from someone from White's team 
uh, two weeks before White Fort Parker over my infamous rant. I don't know if anybody ever seen that video I did when I'm in the blue sweater and I'm in that E-class Merc I had sat, sat round back at Go on, Scoot. Go on. Rock it out. Go on. Go on then. Good. Now, I don't know if anybody ever seen that video, but uh, yeah, it was a proper rant and I had a phone call then. And uh, obviously I don't know it word, it was somebody with a, a southern accent. Could have been baby ting, who knows. Who knows, but who cares anyway? I mean, it's an opinion. I say I don't think it's pay-per-view and I get threatening phone calls. I'm asking for Dillian White's B sample, where is it? We're now into the fourth month. And I get threatening phone calls. Who cares who it is? The point I'm trying to make is this. The person said, you're taking money out of fighter's mouth saying it shouldn't be pay-per-view. How am I? How am I taking money out of his mouth? People will pay for it if they want or if they don't want. You know what I mean? Nobody's going to listen to me with 2,000 subscribers, are they? Eh? Hey? We're only a small little... We're only a small little... Channel. We're not a big channel like Sporting Icons or Boxing Social. We're a small little channel with a few people that are helping us with offices and expenses here and there. A few good people that I'll never forget that have helped me because I've got a long memory, let me tell you. But what are these people going to do? Are they going to go around and threaten every YouTuber? Do we have to be like sporting icons, putting videos out saying people should criticise Dillian White until they know the facts? Well, what do you mean the facts? The facts are the B sample's been missing four months and a B sample is the same as an A sample. It's You pee in the same cup, the same beaker. So... Do you know what I mean? It is what it is, isn't it? But let me just leave you with this. Who second Spawn is was off. Spawn failed a dope test, so Earn had him kicked off the show. White failed a dope test, and Earn never kicked White off the show, did he? Didn't even tell the opponent. We told Who second, didn't they? And kicked him off. I managed to get a guy in on a third as much money. That Chaz Witherspoon. Now it works both ways. So all, so you, you, the guy who rung me up going on about the B sample, fuck off. November 29th I'll be at Dennis Hobson's show if you want to talk about B samples. So I pulled UCAD guy, I chased him with camera at the last show, the UCAD guy. So talk to me about B samples. We all know what's going on. There ain't never going to be any B sample. That's what's going to happen. There ain't, it ain't ever going to happen. There ain't ever going to be no result from it. We all know how this is going, don't we? Alright? It'll end up like Canelo's with a six month ban or something. Because we're more than three month ban gone already, aren't we? So, let's not forget that Liam Cameron got a four year ban for one dope test. Four year for cocaine. Now, if I had something. If I had something out of order, I'd hope, if I had said something out of order, I'd hope that Dillian's trainer, Mark Tibbs, would call me as a class mark as a pal and I respect him. So I don't know, but I don't think it was somebody from Dillian's team because like I just said there, Mark Tibbs would have phoned me and said, Porky, don't ask for Dillian White's B sample on your channel, but I don't know, I'd like to think he would, but I'm not bothered at a threatening phone call. What does that mean? It means shit, doesn't it? it? Means diddly squat. There's talkers and there's prawn cocktail walkers. And they're 89 pence from from shop if you fancy a bag. But it is what it is, isn't it? You know, it's just general chit chat, boxing, and people wanting to play at being gangsters, and none of them have done a day in jail in their lives. So, but. Uh, in the past I've had a few issues and I will have more issues because, like I said, I'm pretty fearless on the channel, aren't I? I like to think I am. I don't really bothered about much. Nobody can beat me any uglier than I am and I've been knocked out many times, kidnapped, threatened, or had cars took off me. I've had all sorts done and I'm still here to tell the tale, aren't I? So, 
it is what it is, isn't it? But it's all a bit crazy at the moment, isn't it? But what can you do? It's uh, there's nothing I wanted more than for Dillian to KO Anthony Joshua, for t and for Tyson Fury to KO Wilder. But at the moment, Wilder and Joshua and Ruiz and Usyk are only top guys who are not who are not doping or have doped in the past. The top four heavyweights on box rec are as follows: Ruiz, Wilder, Joshua. Usek, those top four guys, and none of them have ever been done for PEDs. None. None. So, Tyson Fury had three drug issues Nandrolone, a cocaine, and a refusing a test. Three issues, and he got a two year backdated ban. They are facts. You know what I mean? If you want to talk about facts, I can throw facts at all on you. You know what I mean? If you want to play these PR games, we could talk dope tests, we can talk millions given to charity, but nobody's allowed to mention it. Keep your nose out. And all the rest of Jack and Ori that goes on. You know, and get to get everybody hooked. Do you know what I mean? In a year from now or so, everybody will say, Do you know what? Old Porky were right. If you remember my video, what it, 10 months ago or a year ago, I said Tyson Fury going to match room. Well, keep watching this space. I told you all Billy Joe Saunas would go. Look, when you work in the industry, you can see things. I see things a lot more easier and speak to a lot more people than a lot of people who give me critic who are, who are critical of me. I don't get it all right, and I'm not an expert, but... You know, I'd like to think that I'm pretty transparent on here. End of the day, I'm just a fan. And without fans in boxing, we're not going to be... Boxing's going to be nothing, isn't it? And we're being abused by boxers maxing, masquerading as elite. I've had it with A and Bellew. And now we've got it with Fury and Saunders masquerading as elite. Callum Smith, he's another one. He's masquerading as elite. Kel Brook's still doing it now, isn't he? Amir Khan's doing it while picking millions up, masquerading as elite. When really, Khan should fight Brook, and Fury should rematch Wilder or fight Joshua straight away. And hey, Bell, you rematch should have never even happened, should it? Do you know what I mean? But, uh, I mean, like I said, if anybody disagrees with me, tell me what Tyson Fury and... Uh, Billy Joe Saunders and Callum Smith's top five wins are. Read out their five wins to me and tell me that they're elite. And then read out Carl Frotchers and tell me that he's not elite. Nobody can do that, can they? Boxing is about opinions. Hardcore fans have opinions as well. We all have opinions, don't we? And I can assure you that I'm not wrong all the time. Alright? So, but... I just have had a text message off somebody here. Uh, oh, God, it was sent to, you know, two hours ago. I have not been on here now. Uh, uh, Sky, if you've got Sky Sports, right? Uh, if, if you've got Sky Sports, cancel it. Tell them you want to cancel and they're offering deals out. Uh, but if you tell them that you're unhappy with what the boxing is and you're not happy with the Sky Sports paying for it because of what the boxing is, they're offering you deals for cartoons and films. But they're not with, they're not budging on the price. But you can keep your Sky Sports and they're gonna they're doing deals with people with films and cartoons my mates just got it so it is what it is isn't it uh, what I'm gonna leave you all with is Stubbub has anybody ever come out and explain what's happening with Stubbub you know I'm gonna leave you with some stats as well Sky have done two world title fights in UK since Bellu versus Flores on non pay per view so Sky Sports, two, pay, two title fights 
in UK since Bell Yule Flores on non pay per view. That's from Dale Nichols, he just sent me that. So I'll have to check that out. Yet yeah, Eddie Earn promised 20 a year on every show as a minimum. So that is 42 non pay per view shows and two title fights since. So we are missing 40 title fights, Eddie. That's a good statistic, that. So Eddie Earn promised 20 a year. But out of the last 42 non pay per views, he's given us two. Uh, is that for male or Dale, or does that include the Katie Taylor ones? So, interesting that, isn't it? So, I watched boxing the other night. Oh, please, Zelfa Barrett won. He looks, he looks a class act. Zelfa Barrett, and oh, please, Josh Warrington run. Josh Warrington won. But I thought that. Josh Warrington's opponent could have been a lot better, but he got the win, didn't he? And Zelfa Barrett should change his name to the body, body, body snatcher. Some of the body shots he were putting in, Zelfa Barrett, unbelievable. But I'm very pleased for Nick Manners, who, who I class as a pal. And uh, only just speaking to him the other night, actually. He's a nice guy, Nick Manners. He's the tall black man who works the corner with Josh Warrington's dad. Uh, so. Another thing I want to point out as well, uh, I want to know how Sean O'Hagan, Josh Warrington's dad, isn't trainer at year with Josh Warrington. I mean, Josh is 28 year old, English, British, Commonwealth, European, and a world champion. Four world title fights on trot. He's 30 and 0. He's stopping people now. He's Dunframpton, Selby. And uh, he's also, they were world champions. He's done Randall Munro, he's fought for a world title, and he's done Kid Galahad, who's known as a technician. And you know, he's, he's never really there to it, Kid Galahad, so he's done him as well. So he's never failed a drug test and never been in trouble with police. He's a loyal family man, just like Josh Whale. So, Sean O'Hagan, I tip my hat off to you, you fetched up a good lad there. I'd like to know why Sean O'Hagan's not trainer at year. Uh, I think I think he's done really, really, really well. So, but it is what it is, isn't it? So, oh, and I'll just finish off on this little, this last bit here. Uh, I've done the Dave Allen bit, haven't we? I did that earlier. Uh, Ben Davidson says Dave Allen against Dubar is a great fight. What is he chatting him? Eh? Are they crazy? Eh? Is he, or does he want to train Dave? Ben Davidson saying Dave Allen's uh, and, and Dubois is a great fight. What's up is Ben Davidson training Dave. I won't put it past Dave Allen doing that, you know, because he'll get loads of uh, PR, won't he? Uh, we're being Tyson's trainer plus Tyson's not fighting at the moment so Dave might end up training with Ben Davidson so I won't put it past Dave doing that no flies on Dave Allen very 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 smart individual very cunning uh, Chisora Derek Chisora refused £800,000 to fight Joe Joyce that was the offer turned around and asked for £5 million. Then did an interview saying Frank Warren owes him money. So Frank had lawyers on him apparently. So Derek had to apologise. Oh Derek's a card in here. Derek Chisora. But the point I want to make about boxing and money is this. And I want to point it out about Sonny Edwards. Now I was trying to the point I was trying to make to Sonny Edwards were Joshua, 40 million, right? World champion went to Olympics, 40 million in Team GB. Cal Yafai, 200 grand he got, right? Cal Yafai earns 0.5%. Is it 0.5%? Yeah. 10%, right, of 40 million is 4 million. 1% is 400 grand. So. Half a percent is 200 grand, so Anthony Joshua earns 200 times the amount that Cal Yafai earns for his fights, right? 
and Carl Yafai is a world champion. He's that good for boxing. One man on 200 grand, the other on 40 million. But what about the people on 15,000 and 20,000 on the show, on the Joshua undercard? So are they earning 200 times? So, so work this out as a percentage, right? If you're on 40 million and there's somebody on 40 grand on the same show, is that good? Because it's 0.1%. Hey, 0.1%. Hey, that's a thousand times more. A thousand times more Anthony Joshua's uh, get on somebody if they're on 40 grand. Well, Cal Yafai, like I've just said, 200 grand, Joshua, he's on 40 million. That's the difference, but they're at the same stable. The money is the, 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 the jump. From Joshua to the next lot of lads, what they're earning is embarrassing. And you know Joshua, he, he owns the show when he puts these fighters on, doesn't he? Does Joshua feel embarrassed about what he pays these people? Well, he should do, shouldn't he? Because they're both Team GB, aren't they? And they both come through the system together. But it is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is, isn't it? But do I want to see Galahad Warrington too? Do I? Heck. Do I want to see Colleen Rooney against Rebecca Vardy on an Eddie Hearns show on Dazone or Sky? No. Am I interested in the Derek Chisora Frank Warren spat? No. But Chisora will be long gone when Warren is with Debar as a world champion, so I agree with that. So that's about it, really. So. Uh, that's about it, so. You've had a good part of flesh out me. It took me ages to do that, do this. So peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Shout out to Innovation Alloys. Shout out to Climate Cool South Yorkshire Packaging, and shout out to JJ Crump and Son. All right. I am out of here. This has been a mammoth, mammoth video. I am not. So peace out, keep on trucking, I hope you've enjoyed it, I'm sorry I'm behind the camera, I'm a bit unwell today, but I can assure you I'm in good health, alright, so I hope you enjoy it, I'm going to put this out in part 1, part 2, part 3, and part 4, alright, ciao. Watch me tip. Change battery. Keep coming down for that yellow. Keep coming. <laughs> 